Everything you need to know about the Wizard101 Spring 2022 update. You can go to the timestamps for the update categories you are interested in. For more information, please look at the update notes on the Wizard101 website. Fifth Age PvP. After years of waiting, PvP has entered the Fifth Age. Most importantly, this brings a brand new currency, Blue Arena Tickets, meaning the current ones have been revoked and you will start from the bottom. A big difference from the Fourth Age is Leagues. These are brackets with a specific level requirement and special rules. There are currently four Leagues. The Master League requires Wizards to be level 40 to 50, the rule set for this league is wizards won't be able to crit spells and you are not allowed to use pre-enchanted spells. The legendary league requires wizards to be level 60 to 69. The rule set for this league is wizards won't be able to crit and you are not allowed to use pre-enchanted cards. The exalted league requires wizards to be level 100 to 109. The rule set for this league is no shadow pips, meaning shadow and shadow enhanced spells are disabled and no pre-enchanted cards. The premier league requires wizards to be level 140 to 150. The rule set for this league is no pre-enchanted cards. The PvP and Derby rating page have got a refresh and now have a similar UI to the badge page. Once you click on the age, you will get more information about your ratings. PvP will now work in seasons, each will last around 2 months. At the end of each season, you will have to start at the bottom as a recruit again. Speaking of recruit, there has been a slight change to the ranks and they can be seen on screen. These ranks now use an ELO system, which is similar to most other esports and generally make for a much more fair competitive competition. Instead of losing 16 rank for losing or gaining 16 rank for winning, the new system will give more rank for winning against a higher ranked player and less rank for losing against them. On the flip side, if you are higher ranked than the other player, you will gain less rank beating them, but lose more if you lose. Draws will now make both players lose rank. This is to try and stop draws from being a viable win condition. There is a new infraction system, similar to the Beast Moon infraction system. The more infraction points you have, the more likely you are to not be able to queue until the infractions have decayed over time. You can increase your infraction count by disconnecting during a match, this does include internet outages, abandoning an opponent before the match begins, also known as queue dodging, and for both players when the match ends in a draw. Ambrose has given Diego funding to expand the arena. It is now a vast social area for those who love PvP, Beast Moon, and Decathlon. With the bigger size, there are vendors with new rewards for those who win arena tickets. Most notably, there is a new crafting vendor, Marco Artigiano. He has recipes for brand new stitch gear to show off your rank and recipes for some gear that has been seen in packs in the past. There are now some new reagents specific to PvP that you can get during your battling triumphs. Gear Changes Gear will now start offering multi-school stats to encourage mastering more than one school for both PvP and also PvE. Most notably, some gear from Dragonspire, Chrysalis and Lemuria have been completely changed, adding other schools' stats to yours. Spellments. Spellements have been changed significantly in this update. There are now spellements for rank 1 to 6 spells for most schools. Balance Wizards have spellament paths for Scarab, Scorpion, Locust Swarm, Spectral Blast, Hydra, Samurai, and Savage Paw, plus a new spell from Alhazred Gearhead Destroyer. Death Wizards have spellament paths for Dark Sprite, Ghoul, Banshee, Vampire, Skeletal Pirate, Wraith, Dear Knight, and Lord of Night. Fire Wizards have spellament paths for Firecat, Fire Elf, Sunbird, Immolate, Phoenix, Halophon, and Hephaestus. Ice Wizards have spellament paths for Frost Beetle, Snow Serpent, Evil Snowman, Ice Wyvern, Colossus, Handsome Fomori, Winter Moon, plus a new spell from Lydia Greyrose, Blighthound. Life Wizards have spellament paths for Imp, Leprechaun, Nature's Wrath, Seraph, Luminous Weaver, and Goat Monk, plus a new spell from Moolinda Woo, Earthwalker. Myth Wizards have spellament paths for Bloodbat, Troll, Cyclops, Cyclops Minion, Minotaur, Ninja Pigs, Keeper of the Flame, and Athena Battlesite, plus a new spell from Cyrus Drake, Stone Colossus. Finally, Storm Wizards have spellament paths for Thundersnake, Lightning Bats, Storm Shark, Kraken, Stormzilla, Triton, Catalan, and Queen Calypso. If you need more help about Spellaments, Abner K. Doodle has a tutorial and he is located in the hub of every world. Spellaments drop from bosses in the worlds related to the spells as long as they are an appropriate level. All wizards can collect Spellaments using the appropriate pet adventure talents, and wizards who have trained cantrips can use the magic touch spell on new chests with two other friends. Cantrips. Speaking of cantrips, it's a new activity that lets your wizard cast magic outside the battle circle. You can start by talking to Abner K. Doodle in the hub of every world once you are level 25 or above. Cantrips has five different types, Flourish, Teleport, Radiance, Ritual, and Sigil support spells. Flourish cantrips are a small emote-like action that let your character do various things, such as spin. 
Teleport cantrips let you teleport. Pretty self-explanatory, really. Radiance cantrips let you create a beneficial aura that affects a large area for a limited time. Anyone inside the aura will get these effects. Ritual cantrips will allow you to cast a beam of magical energy at a target. When multiple wizards cast them at a ritual object, interesting things will happen. For example, you can find special chests that once open drop spellaments. Sigil support cantrips are currently not available yet and will be coming in a future update. Cantrip spells have ranks and you can cast spells the same rank as you or below your rank. This is similar to fishing and gardening. Cantrips cost energy and you can gain XP to level up your cantrips. Level locking. With the introduction of PvP leagues, you are now able to lock your level so you can still quest but stay inside a league. There is a lock icon above your experience count in your character sheet. Clicking this brings up a warning and you can activate level locking. You can only do this when you are over level 50. Any experience gained while you are locked will go into an overflow count, which will be added once you unlock your level. Be warned this could take a moment to calculate overflow experience once unlocking your level. Loyalty Store The loyalty program is a way to reward people with memberships. There is a vendor in the shopping district where you can spend loyalty tokens for packs, mounts, cosmetic gear, member benefit, elixirs, spellaments, skeleton keys, and more in the future. Every month, members will get more loyalty tokens. The store will be updated frequently, so you should always check it out. Beast Moon Venture into Heap with the brand new Beast Moon map. Because of the lack of mana in this region, the map has a lot less Pip Wisps than normal. All the other maps have had their Pip Wisp count updated to match the Mirage map. There are two new beast forms, the Fire Draconian and the Death Crocomummy. The Fire Draconian is the master of overtime effects. He is strongest when healed up, allowing him to detonate his damage over times. To keep his health up, he extends heal over times along with having the ability to cast some himself. The Death Crocomummy sacrifices himself to deal extra damage and heal his allies. He's got familiar death tools and also has the first drain that hits all enemies. The next few months rewards for both Beast Moon Hunt and Beast Moon Mayhem have been announced on the update notes. Unforgiving Dead Gauntlet. Head to the far off land of Edinburgh and take a stab at the Queen of the Unforgiving Dead. This new gauntlet can be crafted from peat reagents. You can buy the recipe from Lloyd Falling Weather in the shopping district. The gauntlet has three tiers starting at level 50. Get your friends and have a go. Social Kiosk. This kiosk is for your adventure party to find new members or for those without an adventure party to find one. If you're the owner of the party, you can add your party to the kiosk. You can add it to a specific category so you find someone who does similar activities to you. If you are not in a party, you can easily find adventure parties and ask to be a member. The owner will either accept or decline you. If accepted, you will be made a member of that party for one week. The owner can promote you to a permanent member anytime during that week. If they don't, after one week, you will be removed from the party. Bug fixes and other changes. Players can now purchase an additional bric a brac elixir in each area of your house. The limit is now 400 items. Some items from the Aqualon Horde Pack are now sellable for gold. Loremaster has had several spells removed from her collection, and they will instead be dropped as spell elements from various sources in future updates. If you don't like looking at your most recent pet fail anymore, you can trash them from the pet inspect window. There has been a fix to a few decathlon exploits. The camera angle in the quest release is now more flattering for Din Ho. Second chance chests have been added to more places in Caramel and Lemuria. The help section has been updated with the new spell icons so you know what they mean. There have been some UI and animation adjustments and also stability and performance fixes.